Hello, Facebook Live. Hello, Instagram. Hello, YouTube. Marcus here. What's happening, everybody? Good morning. It's Friday morning, March 6th. And I wanted to uh, drop some uh, some tips on how to buy wild salmon year round. People always are um, asking me because we serve wild salmon year round, and um, we sell. We actually can sell wild salmon here at the restaurant if anybody wants. We sell three pounds um, at a time. Uh, but I'm going to go over tips if you want to go online and just uh, try to buy wild salmon. What you're looking for in the grocery store that'll help you purchase better wild salmon. So, all right, here we go. Well, first off, before I start that, um, tonight we're at Rebibero Winery. Jamie, can you drop the link for that? We're at Rebibero Winery. Uh, we're doing a wine dinner, which is Rebibero's over New Pulse, Gardner side. We're there tonight doing a um, doing a wine dinner with them. I'm doing a cooking demo. Um, good morning, Chris, on Instagram. What's happening? So I'm doing a cooking demo at... Um, at Rebibero Winery tonight, pairing up with wines. It's going to be a fun time. It's $60 per person. Uh, Jamie's going to drop the link on where you can go get tickets. Tickets, like literally like 80 people on Instagram, said, on, on Facebook events said, yes, we're interested, we're interested, we're interested. We can only take like 26 people or so. It's limited. This night, uh, because we can't accommodate everybody. There's not, enough, there's not enough seats. There's not enough tables and chairs there to accommodate everybody. So you must make reservations, uh, purchase ahead of time. That is tonight. Um, that's happening tonight at Rebibero Winery, 7 o'clock. Jamie's going to drop the link for that. So um, good morning, everybody who's watching. If, if you're watching live, drop a comment, hashtag live. If it's on the replay, hashtag replay. Uh, it's a little before 8, 8 a.m. here in New York. I'm going to tell you uh, some tips on buying salmon. Jamie and I have a radio show called Chef on a Mission Radio that airs on iHeart, um, uh, Apple uh, Podcasts, uh, W for Divas, um, Podbean. It uh, goes on YouTube. gets distributed all over. And our last show, we had a great segment on, which is going to be published this Wednesday at noon on W for Divas. Our, um, we had a great show, and one of the segments was how to buy wild salmon, what to look for when you buy wild salmon. People ask me all the time, they're like, Marcus, how do we buy wild salmon like you buy wild salmon? We, it's hard to find in the store. It's impossible to find in the store is what I'm told. And it truly can be impossible to find high-quality wild salmon in the store. So here's the first thing to know about wild salmon. Wild salmon that you want comes from Alaska, not from Russia and not from China. If you read packages very carefully, a lot of that inferior stuff, a lot of the, the price 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 driven stuff, the, the stuff to where the price point's low, you'll look at it and literally say product of China, product of Russia, or product of the U.S. processed in China, product of the U.S. processed in Russia, product of Russia processed in China. Um, so you want to get, first of all, something that's caught in America. Alaska is where you're going to want to get it caught. Alaska and processed in America. All right, that's the key to this. American caught, American processed. Now, people are probably wondering like, why? Why would they ship it to China? So even calamari from the East Coast here gets shipped to China to get processed because it costs 20 cents per pound round trip. That means if you land calamari, if you're a calamari fisherman or calamari company like Town Dock, um, like Town Dock, Ruger's out of, out of Rhode Island, it'll, you can, land all that calamari, ship it to China, have them process it, package it, label it, box it, ship it back to your warehouse in New England and only pay 20 cents per pound for the whole thing as opposed to paying somebody $18 an hour, a fair living wage, $20 an hour, whatever fair living wages, instead of paying somebody an American fair living wages, they're shipping it all to China, right? So most calamari companies do this, by the way, folks. Um, it's either caught and shipped there or caught there and packaged there. Uh, a lot of Indian calamari in the market, a lot of Chinese calamari, Asian calamari that is, um, has flooded the market. That, that's, that is cheap calamari, really inexpensive, cheap calamari compared to American caught and American processed. So when you buy salmon from Alaska, you want American caught and American processed. Now, um, for wild salmon, now salmon can come through the Bering Strait and through, through Russia. They might say, well, what's the difference, Marcus? What is the difference in the salmon that's just a couple hundred miles away in Russia versus the one that's in Alaska that's a couple hundred miles away? So the big difference is that 
Russia does not have a quota system. Alaska has a very meticulous quota system. Sustainability um, is, in, is, is, is their whole mission there. So in Alaska, they actually wait for so many fish to swim with the uh, stream and start spawning to start catching salmon. Now, in Russia, uh, same thing with king crab in Russia and other things they catch. They just catch as much as they can. They don't regard, you know, uh, the sustainability factors. So they don't really care about that the salmon is going to be there in the future. They just catch, 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 catch. So this is another reason why that product is a cheaper product, why it doesn't, um, 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 why it doesn't, uh, uh, why, just, just why it's a cheaper product in general. So now salmon, wild salmon, true wild salmon has a very short season. So chances are you're going to have to, or you should be buying frozen wild salmon year round. Frozen wild salmon is going to be the best because it's going to be fresher than fresh. What happens with salmon is when they catch, or any fish, when they catch it, they typically freeze it. FAS, frozen at shore or frozen, frozen on shore or frozen at sea. FAS or FOS are the two terms that fish companies do with high quality frozen. So for example, like the albacore tuna that we buy, that albacore tuna only has a six-week season. The boats go out for six weeks, eight weeks, and that's it. The boats stay out, by the way. They don't come back. So everything that's caught is then frozen on the boat when it's caught, processed, frozen on the boat when it's caught, and then packaged, and then comes back to, to the U.S., the mainland, and then it's still put in a warehouse. And But this is the same, same product that is going for sushi grade. Now, a lot of people say, oh, my gosh, I don't like frozen seafood. Well, there's a reason why you probably don't like frozen seafood because when you take seafood at home, if you were to go and a couple days later, say, I'm going to freeze this piece of salmon. Um, or if you went out and caught some trout or something or some bass and, and came home and said, I'm going to freeze. I have too much. I'm going to freeze some. Your freezer at home is not designed to freeze products. It's designed to keep things frozen that start frozen to stay frozen, right? There's a big difference because your home freezer is zero degrees. Something that's blast freezing on a processing plant that does that process seafood is negative 40. It's a totally different experience for the molecules of the fish, okay? When you freeze something slow, the molecules burst. The water leaks out and becomes dry and becomes grainy. When you flash freeze something within a matter of a couple of minutes at negative 40 or however cold they get that thing even colder than get that it it there's no damage there's no rupturing the molecules of the fish so that's why it's a totally different product in fact a lot of sushi comes frozen and you a lot of people don't realize this if you're eating sushi a lot of that fish especially in certain states it has to be frozen by law for safety reasons because when you freeze it you're going to kill a lot of bacteria parasites things like that that are in it worms that are in it you're going to kill all that off so it's actually much safer to have frozen seafood, especially if you're eating it raw and sushi. So there's nothing wrong at all with frozen seafood. Now, if they catch Alaskan salmon on a, on a Monday, right? On a Monday, they catch, they catch salmon on a Monday. Uh, it gets landed um, near Anchorage or Bristol Bay or wherever they're landing. Uh, my New York distributor in the fish market would order it. The New York distributor would order it from the place in Seattle. They would ship it uh, via um, an airplane. Uh, so by that time, you're, you're already three days into your salmon, right? Three days in. By the time the salmon hits the warehouse, sometimes the salmon's going to be whole. It needs to be processed, whatever happens. Then the chef like me needs to call the phone, pick up, order from the, the distributor in New York City. Um, and maybe they don't deliver it to me every single day. Maybe they deliver it to me twice a week or three days a week, Monday, Wednesdays, Thursday, Monday, Wednesdays, Fridays. So now I have to wait till Friday to get that fish in. But I had to have enough fish from the previous order in the restaurant to actually carry me through. So I have enough inventory. So I probably got fish in last Monday. And now Monday's fish still isn't done yet. So now I'm waiting for Saturday or Sunday to finish Monday's fish. And the fish I got on Sunday, I mean, on Friday that I ordered from the distributor that got delivered, probably not going to start running until Monday again. Well, it's already seven days old, right? And this is the same thing how grocery stores work as well. All right, it's already seven days old. Because the stuff in the grocery stores that's sitting on the shelf there on the ice, they still have more stuff as backup in, in the cooler and back. They still have a case of salmon in the backup or a case of fish in the backup. They just don't have everything they have that for that day stuck on ice right there. That's not it. They have the refrigerator back there. Everything's on backup. So you're always using previous 
stock, not maybe something comes in fresh. So if you're going to a restaurant to order fresh, truly non-frozen wild salmon, it al could already be a week old. Now, some restaurants have a FedEx system where they FedEx it in right from the source, but then we're three days old by the time it gets to them, two, three days old. Um, so when you're going to buy fresh, so-called fresh, non-frozen products, it's really not as fresh as you think it is. When you buy something that's frozen, frozen at sea, frozen on shore, those are the two terms you look for, it's frozen within hours, hours of catching it. So the fish, a lot of fish haven't even hit rigor mortis yet. They've had no time. Uh, there's no time for bacterial growth. It's just, it's a very quick process. When you thaw that at home, you literally have a week long, at least a week, to have stuff that is safer than you bought in the grocery store that day. So look for frozen wild salmon. You go to the, like if you're, if we're here in, in the East Coast, you go to ShopRites or Wegmans or Whole Foods and you go into their frozen food section and you pick up the packages and you read the packages. Now here in ShopRite, now every time I go in, I always look, so I'm always curious. And only a couple of times have I actually seen them have like a really high quality brand, um, um, in there that's that's really American caught American process now I've been to Walmart I've done the same thing Walmart's almost impossible Walmart's driven a lot on price points price point price point price point they want to be cheap there if you look at their stuff it's probably caught in China process in China ShopRite hit and miss will have something that's caught in America processed in America they will have that uh, they have had the Alaskan gold brand which is a very high quality brand of line caught not net caught line caught coho salmon which we that's one of the brands we've used um, and they have had it in there uh, from occasions they've had frozen sides of it so you can find that but you want to look for caught in America processed in America and it'll say that right on the label but you have to flip it over uh, if you're going to be going to like a Sam's Club or a restaurant depot like restaurant depot has um, Kita salmon or pink salmon um, Or silver salmon frozen by the case and it's a really inexpensive really inexpensive price But if you read the label, it's gonna be again processed in China and it's also gonna be pumped with a solution um, Most fish when you buy them in restaurant depot warehouses like that that are really going that are now appealing to chefs that are buying to make as much money as they can in the restaurant, most of those fish are pumped. In fact, when I go into Restaurant Depot, I look down the whole line of fish, and I'll pick up and I'll look and say, is there anything in here that I can even possibly buy? Nine out of 10 fish in there, 90% of the fish in there that I see are always pumped with a solution, which means it's pumped for water weight, it adds some kind of salt, salinity, some solution to it. When you cook them, they shrink. They shrink up drastically sometimes. Um, you know, you can lose 25% at least, maybe even more. So if you buy sole and you roll it and bake it and you pack a pan tight, and you bake it, all of a sudden, when you take it out of the oven, there's all the space in between because it's just all water weight that's coming out and the pan will actually be filled up with water. Um, I've worked at places in the past that have done that and it's pretty disgusting, but that's, but when you're buying sole or salmon, I mean, you can buy wild salmon in, in um, Restaurant Depot for like, five six dollars a pound almost the same price as just still more than farm salmon but it comes down really really cheap because you're paying for water weight so that's a, a caution to be aware if you have access to like a restaurant depot i would say no 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 do not buy wild salmon there by the case i'm not good sam's club i've not looked in a long time uh, but sam's club I, I don't really know. I can't speak for Sam's Club. So you can go online as well. There's a lot of great companies online. I would go to Alaska Gold. Alaska Gold would probably be the best place to buy. And um, Alaska Gold Seafood out of out of Alaska, they probably have, a, they do have the, a really great product, good pricing, something decent. I'm not sure. You probably pay 15 bucks a pound for their salmon, but it's a very high quality line caught salmon. So Alaska Gold is great as a source for that. Um, and that should cover it for tips on how to buy high quality salmon, uh, wild salmon year round. It's going to be frozen. It needs to be from Alaska, caught and processed in Alaska, uh, not pumped with any chemicals, all that kind of stuff. Folks, thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it. If you're watching this live, drop a comment, hashtag live. If it was on the replay, drop a comment, hashtag replay. Um, and hope this helps you with uh, purchasing salmon. And again, tonight, Jamie and I are at Ribibro Winery, March 6th, Friday, March 6th. We're at Ribibro Winery doing a wine dinner. I'm doing a risotto demonstration, a little balsamic lecture, talking about how to make risotto. And I'll be making it right there in front of everybody. I'll be making risotto. 
Um, it's sixty dollars a ticket. Includes wine. Includes lots of food. It is going to be a fantastic night at Revivero. So uh, there is a link on our website. If you want to go on our website and buy tickets, you have to buy tickets for this wine dinner. It is one of those things where there's not enough seats. There's not enough tape room. We have about 20 something sold. We only take like 26 people. So we're about four people away, I think. Or maybe we're at 26 and we can only take 30, something like that. We only have literally like four seats left. So go onto our website, scroll down, hit the, hit the banner and purchase tickets ASAP. I did a Facebook Live yesterday that sold several tickets on my Facebook Live yesterday, just about that. So um, it could sell out very, very easily. And that's it. We can't take anybody on, on Facebook. There's like 80 people that are interested in going. We couldn't even begin to do 80 people. So um, go on to there, go on to our website, go on, buy your tickets if you want to do that tonight. So it's at 7 o'clock. It's going to be a lot of fun. And talk to everybody later. I hope everybody has a fantastic day and uh, weekend. And talk, talk to you later.